All right, welcome to another Warhammer 2v2 battle. This is a competitive ladder battle between myself as the Dark Elves and MR Defender as the Empire versus Jade playing the Vampire Counts and Nep playing the High Elves. Nep is a very good High Elf player. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, he has tons of experience. I looked on the ladder, he's got like over 500 games on 500 wins under his belt, so definitely very experienced. I didn't see what Jade's at on the ladder, but uh, these were some very good players we were playing against, and they did beat us earlier in the day. I want to showcase the rematch that we had against them. I might showcase the earlier game at another time, but this one was tons of fun. We were playing on the pitch flow, and uh, there were a lot of like elements to look at in this battle, so it was very fun. So us in the deployment, we basically perched ourselves up on the high ground, and I put some Harganath executioners here into the forest. I'm just going to show you them here. One two and then i've got the blades of the blood cream who if they're not run over by large can just mulch up pretty much anything that the vampire counts and the um high elves can offer in terms of infantry the only thing that could really you know cause them problems is you know like a claw of nagash or some of those really large um types of units uh very cool thing here is mr defender brought the tempelhof luminarch so we were curious to see how that was going to do, and then he's got Boris Toddbringer up in the air. I brought Marathi uh, and two units of Harpies, two Manticores, because I wanted something that would be able to um, contest the Star Dragon, which is something that I saw uh, Nep take a few times. And the Harpies are a nice counter to Felbats. Uh, and if you look here, uh, Jade has brought four units of Felbats, so I knew that if the Harpies could get into the Felbats, uh, I mean, they're not as fast as the Felbats, so the Felbats could, in theory, cut them, but it would give me at least a little bit of airplay to sort of keep them under control and prevent them from mucking up more higher value units. So both throws going in here. They're st initially just tapping some Skeleton Warriors. I think we'll later transition onto some Grave Guard. Pistoliers are trying to kite these Felbats. Uh, the Felbats are very, very fast. So are the Pistoliers. Pistoliers 90 speed, but Felbats speed of 110, so they can catch the Pistoliers. Uh, and the Felbats are, you know, really well used when they are on skirmish units. But the important thing here is the Fireborn have circled round onto the flank. I've started uh, squaring up my um, my Spearmen here to face that. And then I do have in reserve another unit of Spearmen just to protect my bull thrower. Uh, and then I've rotated over uh, the two Manticor Manticores and Marathi, and if needed, I will send them down onto the Fireborn. I know the Fireborn have anti-large, but two Manticores plus Marathi's debuff uh, with the support of a Helebroni, it should be enough to do a lot of damage to them, and it won't be very cost-effective for those uh, Helebroni. So, yeah, some shots still going in f from the artillery, the... Um, Hellstorm rocket battery that uh, MR Defender has is now online and it's starting to do some work. I do have the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. I wanted to get them tagging in on the um, Graveguard over here. I I mean, my first choice target for the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows would be the Fireborn, but um, there is a lot of infantry up in front here and I didn't want to waste the uh, Dark Rider repeater crossbow ammo shooting it on things like Spearman with shields. So, a net of M talk goes down here on the Harganath Executioners, but Marathi is able to escape. The Felbats are uh, basically intercepted by the Fair Manticore and Marathi, so they're going to get chopped up pretty good. On the flank here, two units of Shadow Warriors. Keep in mind, Shadow Warriors are stealth, right? So I can't see them until they start to fire, which they do now. <laughs> so I'm noticing that my left flank is under a lot of pressure. The Bull Thrower has transitioned onto the uh, Fireborn, and it's going to start chipping away on them. Luminarch is taking some shots here now. Let's see where it's going to fire. Bam. It's, so it's trying to do some work on Manfred von Karstein. Uh, it looks like that one was a swing and a miss, and ammo is very precious with that. But, yeah. So our opponents, uh, I think they're trying to pull the Fireborn out of range of the Bolt Thrower so that it drops its attack order. Uh, and then he's going to try and reposition it in, but I'm going to watch that very closely and keep swapping it back onto the Fireborn. Uh, yeah, so you can see they're kind of just going out of range. I don't know if he quite made it, but that is a good trick to do. If you do have cavalry and your opponent's busy with micro, you can just pull them out of range, and usually people put their, their artillery on guard mode, right? And then once the shots are dropped, it's not going to chase, right? Then you can go back into the range, and uh, yeah. So 
uh, Jade brought triple Vargulf here. So the Feral Manticores gave us the mass to kind of pin them in place and keep them honest and prevent them from cycle charging the Dread Spears, which was a really nice thing here. The Harganath Executioners are taking some fire from the Sisters of Avalorn, but they are in the woods here. And I do have some uh, Harganath Executioners, Blades of the Blood Queen. We're going to transition over to these Keepers of the Flame, who came over to try and pressure out Marathi and uh, the Manticores when I had them there. I did send one unit of Harpies into these Spearmen because I wanted to tie them up. Harpies have very high melee defense, right? And uh, Spearmen have very low melee attack. So the I knew that the Harpies were going to be able to hold those Spearmen for a while and prevent them from pushing up into the Bolt Thrower and the Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbow because if they were here, I knew the Fireborn would have an, a defensive anchor unit they could fall back into and the Fireborn could have pushed right in, right into the Repeater Bolt Thrower. So uh, Shadow Warrior is shooting in here on the Knights of the Blazing Sun. They are inactive right now, but I'm sure MR is going to react to that soon. Uh, Marathi... She's still just debuffing everything that she can. Soul Blade, she's working with the Fair Amount of Cores. And look at this, a big charge coming in here. And look at how much damage this is going to do to Teclis. Just chunking him down to half health. Dual Manticore and Marathi just totally melting his face. That is huge, huge damage. And uh, Teclis, uh, he can often heal up through a lot of damage. He's got, let's, let's just see, does he have Potion of Chiroi? Um see, Teclis. Yes, he does have Potion of Troy. To me, that's like an automatic pick with Teclis. Uh, he does also have Regrowth. So he has the ability to get that health back if he needs to. But, uh, you know, it's going to be very dicey for him. Now, he does have the Sisters of Avalorn in the background. And I've definitely gotten his attention by charging Teclis. Plus, I have to be very careful because he has Net of Amontok, right? So if he freezes Marathi uh, in front of the two Sisters of Avalorn, she's very lightly armored. She's going to get absolutely shredded by the archers, right? Because there's one, two, uh, two units of sh uh, Shadow Warriors, two units of uh, Sisters of Avalorn. If they all focus fire Marathi, she's gonna get very, very low. And that's what's happened here, right? So I had to pull her back. I did send, uh, I think, some Dark Riders in here just to pin the Fireborn into the Spears. I knew that, you know, the Dark Riders with Repeater uh, Crossbows are not going to win versus this Fireborn, but with Marathi, with some Harpies, with uh, Spearmen, it's going to be very costly for these Fireborn to be bogged down in all of that. Some Spearmen do come out over here to help out the Temple of Luminarch, uh, and the Felbats have gotten onto it and are mucking it up. Meanwhile, uh, I do have some Harganath Executioners in the background here. There was a unit of Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. They're playing Ring Around the Rosy with a unit of Felbats. Uh, the Felbats uh, did get onto them, and I had them on skirmish mode, and it took me a little while to notice that. So, uh, yeah, the Harpies were chasing after them, but these two outran the Harpies. So, eventually, I just said, okay, screw up, I'll pull the Harpies over here. So Marathi drops a Soul Blight. I tried to catch more, uh, sorry, a Soul Stealer. I tried to catch more units with it. I only ended up getting uh, some Jet Spears, but it did give her a little bit of health. So that was enough to kind of keep her alive from some of the Missile Fire. Sisters of Avalorn are shooting in here on the Harganath Executioners, and they no longer have the benefit of the woods to protect them. But, uh, you know, they've already done a lot of work for me, so I'm okay with that. And look, Marathi, Harpy, and Manticore, they do get in on Teclis. Teclis gets absolutely shredded to pieces, and that is a huge pickup for me. Balance Bar is dead even. Actually, it's tilting slightly in our opponent's favor, but now with Teclis off the field, that's going to really hurt the High Elf leadership. And uh, Harpy's Manticores on the Sisters of Avalorn, that is not a place the Sisters of Avalorn want to be. With the, the terror-causing ability of the Manticore and the high weapon damage, they're going to take an absolute beating. And it looks like the Hellstorm Rocket Battery are shooting in on them, so it's... You know, some sacrificial harpies here, I guess. Not not ideal. Probably overkill, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll live with it. Vargos here are doing work on what's left of, I think, uh, some great swords, uh, and you know they'll probably clean them up. I do send in, I guess. Well, I didn't send it in. It was rampaging at this point. The man car just dove in there. But Marathi got uh, Teclis, so that's that's really really good for us. And I think some of these skirmish units are going to start to get wiped out. I do have a unit of uh, Jet Spears in the back. I, I will pull them back shortly. I think that uh, maybe, I'm not sure if they were not on guard mode or what happened there, but they'll be coming back. Some Halberdiers are in here. Some Pistoliers are trying to take some pot shots in wherever they can. Um, I'm not exactly sure if they're shooting at the Vargles or at Manfred, but yeah, I mean, now the Vampires are pretty much down to one unit of Graveguard 
the Vargals, which are almost unkillable, and uh, a corpse cart. So battle bar tilting a little bit in our favor now that the front line of the Vampire Coast, it, or Vampire Counts, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm never going to get that right. Now that the Vampire Counts are out of the front line troops, and the High Elves are pretty much out of everything as well. There is a unit of rallied Shadow Warriors, only 19 of them in the back, but they're very low on uh, leadership. And at some point I will send in these rep uh, Dark Riders with repeater crossbows with the charge bonus, who should be able to break them off the field. Some Halberdiers here are, are, are inactive. I, th I think, yeah, there was a command order, I think, just issued to attack this uh, corpse cart. Um, so yeah, things are starting to look a little better for us. Balance Bar, I think, still slightly in our opponent's favor, but uh, things are looking up. Toddbringer has chased the Fireborn off of the field. I guess he just wanted to secure his back line as much as possible. I do have a unit of Dread Spears. i got to bring them in here, but uh, yeah, maybe fatigue is starting to be a factor. This was a very intense battle. Two units of Harganath Executioners have just rallied. Pistoliers have just dove in to tie down uh, Manfred with the mass, but Manfred counters with the unit of Zombies. <coughs> Very intense stuff here. Marathi is very, very low, but so is the leadership of these Sisters of Avalorn. And so I, I send in the Dark Riders with uh, repeatable crossbows to get a charge and just prevent Marathi from being surrounded. And uh, yeah, they do break off, but I will cycle charge them when I can. And hopefully I can break these Sisters or maybe get them low. I'm not sure. Not quite. Oh, anyways. But the Hellstorm Rocket Battery with the Dragon Princes off the field, it is active again, right? So if the Sisters do ball around Marathi, they're going to take that Hellstorm Rocket Battery fire. It is going to start shooting in at the Grave Guard as well. So that will be the last... Uh, well, there's two units of Grave Guard here. So the last two units of Vampire Infantry are right here. The Great Swords are still hanging tight. You know, I'm, I'm very impressed with their ability to survive... Uh, against these Vargals for so long, but they do have Spearmen nearby, they do have the Halberdiers nearby, and they do have debuffs from Boris Toddbringer uh, and Marathi, who have kind of been in and out of this area, kind of reducing their melee attack. Shadow Warriors are getting to work on these Halberdiers, but I do have some Rally Troops now, some Harpies and some Dread Spears, who are able to kind of just wrap them up and give them a little love top and get out of the, the way. So Marathi, she's still going with, uh, she's been dropping um, Soul Blights and and uh, Soul Stealers wherever she can. Uh, I do have a very, very tattered Manticore. Balance Bar still completely even. Hellstorm Rocket Battery is now out of ammo. Uh, and the Felvats, maybe they've chased off a unit of Dark Riders with Peter Crosskills. I'm not sure. But anyways, these eight Fireborn, if they uh, you know, are able to sustain any combat, yeah, they're going to route off the last... 13 of those Dark Riders uh, with repeater crossbows. So now it's the Pharaoh Manticore's turn. He just barely saves Marathi from a certain doom from that Vargo. If look at Marathi, I'm just going to show you like her health right now. 44. 44 health. So like this is how close the fight is. Balance Bar dead even. And if she had died with 44 health, like this could have been over. But a huge uh, attack in here for Boris Toddbringer. He's got Fawz Protection on him, just keeping him alive from this Vargulf and allowing him to do some work here against Manfred von Karsten. He, Manfred von Karsten's got to be very low on uh, mana right now. He's at his healing cap, and he's down to 800 health. So any damage that goes on to him now, he's not getting it back. Boris Toddbringer is taking a beating from these Bar Vargulfs, but we're also giving it back to Manfred as much as we can. And the Pharaoh Manticore is hel helping out, but I'm at this point, like Marathi, she basically fled, and I'm terrified to really bring her in to help out. So we're really going to rely on the Halberdiers to do work here on the Vargulf, on Manfred, on the, the remnants of these uh, Grave Guard, and hope that the mass of that very depleted Pharaoh Manticore, uh, the Harpies, and uh, Boris can just sort of squeak things out for us. So there's Manfred still hanging tough, 600, 600 health. He's doing an absolute beast job with his dual Bor uh, Vargul. So now it's getting very dicey on Boris, even with Foss Protection. He's taken a lot of damage. If he dies, we don't have any other large units that can really pin the Vargul. So very, very scary situation for us. Uh, I do have Marathi here. I'm tempted to charge her in, but just bringing her close is lowering her leadership and like it's she's right around six four so she's wavering even though she's not even touching them and i'm trying to figure out is there a way i can get in and charge 
it's it's looking very scary. Boris Toddbringer down to 481 health. Uh, he does have uh, an ability to heal, but so do the Vargos. The Vargos have like still 2,000 health on one, another 2,000 health on the other. Our lords are basically dead. Uh, we have no winds of ma magic left, really. So, uh, I mean, we do have the tools, the spears and the halberds and the spearmen, but the problem is that we have no way of getting these uh, Vargos to stay with us. And we're starting to get up on the timer now too, right? It's a 20 minute uh, battle and we're wondering, okay, well, I can't tap them with uh, Boris. I can't hit them with Marathi really. Uh, so what are we gonna do? Like, how are we gonna prevent this game from being a draw? Cause if the timer runs out, that's what could happen, right? And at this point we're smelling blood, the balance bar is in our favor. We're like, how can we finish this off? So the Vargos are kiting. They're trying to, you know, stabilize their leadership and regen health. This one's at about minus 13. Uh, but I definitely didn't want them to stabilize their leadership. So what I did is I tried to fly my Lord just over top of them. I didn't want it to land because if it lands, then it can be attacked. And that would have been GG for me. But just keeping it in the area, it sort of, it provides a leadership debuff, I think. Uh, and uh, that's enough to just keep them crumbling, and that was so important. Boris as well here, but Marathi, uh, at some point, it's I'm going to just fast forward a little bit here. She does lose her nerve. She didn't even land. She's just totally chicken because she was so low on health, and I guess these do cause terror. Um, but the one is still crumbling. It's down to, it's funny because it goes down, but then it heals up, and it goes down and heals up. It's just holding on here. They did ball them together uh, for a little bit, but Boris is just going to stand over top of them with the, the leadership debuff, and uh, before you know it, bam, it just crumbles to the ground. So very, very fortunate situation for us to have that leadership debuff. And at this point, I think our opponents basically uh, sort of throw the match because they're like, well, it's done now. So crazy game, super, super fun. Uh, and, you know, these are two players, Nep, Will Nep, and Jade, who play together a lot. I have played against them with Justice, I played against them with MR, and they've pretty much always beaten us, so it's really nice to kind of pull out a win against them. Uh, I do think the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows were very, very helpful in this matchup. I mean, I didn't think that they carried by any means, but they did, like, they did cause a lot of problems. Uh, uh, they kept the Dragon Prince honest, and they were a threat to the Keepers of the Flame, so they couldn't just, you know, go out and open uh, cover. They were able to cycle charge some things, some Shadow Warriors, just pin them in place when I needed. Just something, anything to pin things. So that was great. The uh, Blades of the Blood Queen just mulched everything, so super happy about that. And the Fair Manticores were kind of the answer I had to the Vargulfs. I was not anticipating uh, Nep to not bring a Star Dragon. Uh, the last couple times I played Nep, he's tended to take Alariel plus a Star Dragon. And usually, he, and sometimes he takes um, a Frostheart Phoenix. So versus all of those, the Ferramantle cores would have been a good choice. So I didn't get to use them for that, but they still provided a lot of utility for me. And they're only like 800 bucks. Like they're not you're not breaking the bank by bringing them. You can get two of them for like 1600 It's pretty solid. Uh, Boris Toddbrigger did what Boris Toddbrigger does. He was able to break off the you know the last bit of the Fireborn after they had been kind of chipped away by a lot of things. Uh, Hellstorm Rocket Battery was online for most of the fight, which was nice. The Fell Bats were busy, I guess, chasing around the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows and other things, so they didn't really lock up the Hellstorm Rocket Battery for too, too long. And the Templehof Luminarch, it did get kind of uh, beat on there, but it also got in a few shots here and there on Manfred, which was some really nice damage. And the Great Swords, the, you know, they held out very well against um, a lot of Grave Guards, so that was nice stuff there. For Nep, uh, I think, you know, maybe a little bit more uh, cavalry or maybe keeping the spearmen a bit closer to the uh, skirmish units might have helped him. In the end, I think it's very hard for uh, the sisters, like basically it's hard for the High Elves to deal with Hargoneth executioners unless you're going to beat them with cavalry or with the sisters of Avalorn. And I had the executioners in the forest, so it prevented the sisters of Avalorn from really getting a lot of value. There was only 15 kills on one and 14 on the other. So maybe I was a bit fortunate by the map that there was a bit of cover there that I was able to use. Uh, Manfred von Karstein, I mean, he tanked out for a long time. Vargos are super awesome units, and I think they performed very well. I mean, they, they stuck in it to the end. 
Graveguard did okay, 65 kills apiece, like, and the Felbaths were a lot to handle. So I think our opponents overall, I mean, they took balanced armies. They played them very, very well. It was a close battle. It came right down to the end. So it could have gone either way. I mean, you saw Boris was at, like, you know, 100 health. Marathi was at, like, 40 health. Uh, you know, flip of a coin, uh, who wins this uh, this battle. But every every fight I've had against Nep and Jade have been very, very close like that. And so it was nice for a change that we actually ended up on the, on the right side of the coin. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, catch you around. Bye.